Hello. Yes, well, I think it's pretty obvious what we're going to be looking at today. It's Shark Bite, the latest incarnation of the Fat Shark digital FPV system. Uh, so you've got a goggle module now. Everybody wanted the goggle module. Ground station bad. So now we have the goggle module. And they've actually done a really nice job on this. Um, it's got two patches built in and stick two on these on there, we can stick another two patches I guess. The connection is via HDMI on the bottom and you can either power it off your balance lead or they give you another nifty lead which has two plugs on it and can run off a 3 or 4S in your pocket. It's got a regulator built into it too, yay! So you can use 18650s. Um, this is the BTX. It's 20 by 20 ish. Uh, it's about 12 mil high and has an MMCX connector for the antenna. Not my favorite, but what can you do? That's the camera that goes with it. It's a little digital interface. So it's a full digital camera system now. Uh, one of the criticisms of the original system was that it had an analog HD camera. But no more. So let's jump straight into testing because unboxing is boring. This is going to be our test nugget today. It is a three inch micro alien and it has been de slammed to fit the 20 by 20 stack in because this wasn't a very large bodied vehicle to begin with. Um, it's a good little test vehicle, but you could put this into something bigger without any dramas at all. 20 by 20 will let you put it into little pod races and things too, which is a nice step up from the 30 by 30 we had with Bite Frost. Not too much else to say about this test rig, um, except that I'm not bothering to tune it, so expect wobbles, expect the usual crappy flying. Uh, we're looking more at the image and the system here than the machine in question. Field. So straight away we're into it with Fat Shark up the top and DJI down the bottom. Pretty much the first thing I did here is fly behind a massive clump of vegetation and the differences between the systems kind of jump out at you. I discussed the important points in my last comparison but let's just reiterate quickly. DJI has variable latency factor and drops frames when the signal gets low. It also reduces its bit rate dynamically, so you get that blocky JPEG digital compression. Fat Shark, on the other hand, just breaks up like analog, but the latency stays the same and you can fly through the static pretty easily. DJI still clearly has the upper hand when it comes to the raw penetration and the power output though. Um, but the new Shark Bite is a step up in power and it shows in the reduced breakup. It's also very interesting how much worse DJI looks with the Cadex Nebula camera on the bottom left, which says to me that we're a long way from seeing the maximum potential of Shark Bite. DJI also appear to do a lot more post-processing of their images, like sharpening, and uh, this section here is particularly interesting. Focus mode has kicked in with DJI and most of the edge detail is completely lost. Colorwise, the new Shark Bite camera is definitely an improvement on the old Bite Frost one. Uh, and even though it looks a little bit softer here, that's because I haven't played with the settings yet, so we'll discuss that more later. Righto, so now it's time for a little bit of the latency testing. Um, if you didn't see my last comparison, what I'm doing here is I've got all the goggles plugged in and I'm flashing my camera flash and uh, recording this at 240 frames a second. So slowed down, we can then frame by frame it and figure out roughly what the latency of the systems is. You can see the goggles flashing there a split second after the original flash. Okay, so the results are in and I have to say they're quite interesting. Uh, I did try and replicate the experiment as much as I could, so several flashes each time and um, there's a little bit of variance in the results because 240 frames a second you only have so much accuracy so bear in mind there's a, there's a little bit of a fudge factor in here um, that said 
I was getting around about 15, 16 milliseconds latency with the analog and almost exactly the same with SharkBite. So it's basically on par with analog is what I'm seeing here. I find that maybe a little hard to swallow. It's probably got a little bit more latency in it. But then again, the analog camera that I'm using is an old HS1177 and it depends on the processing in your receiver module and all that sort of good stuff as well. Um, that one was using a Furious module and not the um, Immersion RC one. So yeah, it's hard to tell, but almost exactly the same result is quite interesting. And uh, compared to DJI, significantly less. So DJI was coming in around six frames of, of latency, which is consistent with around 25 milliseconds or so. Um, and that's pretty much what their goggles report. So um, we can take these numbers as being kind of representative. Uh, and yeah, the conclusion is SharkBite is faster than DJI, which is interesting. And you've got that fixed latency too. So it's always going to be 16 milliseconds. And uh, DJI is going to hop around, drop frames, retry and things like that. So there you go. Quite an interesting result. So before I wrap up and wax lyrical about various things, we'll have a quick look at the OSDs that are built into the system. This is the Fat Shark one. Let's just set your VTX channel, power and the automatic power mode and you can play with your PIDs, but that's about it. So if you want to do more, you're going to need to hook up to beta flight. Next, we have the camera OSD, which is also pretty basic. Uh, let's you adjust the basic camera settings and white balance or reset things to defaults if you want. It's handy though. We'll just have a little bit of a closer look at one of those settings now, which I played with, which is the sharpness and out of the camera, by default, it's only set to 60 something and I found that a bit soft. So I just played around a bit here. I've picked a point in the middle. It seems to be a little bit sharper, um, but not hurting your eyeballs sharp. So that's what I've ended up settling on about 130 there. I'm sure there's more tweaking that can be done with this camera. Um, so I look forward to see what sort of profiles people come up with for their camera settings. So, conclusion time. Well, there's a few things to say here. The first one, I think, is that there's obviously going to be a lot of comparison to DJI uh, with this system. And that's fair enough. They're both digital FPV systems. But comparisons have been made before and there's a certain uh, there's a certain type of person that likes to comment on videos on things on Facebook. Uh, the armchair expert out there. I just want to shut you down before you even bother. Uh, I don't care. I know DJI looks better. There you go. You have it. Okay. DJI looks better. Uh, it has better penetration and it probably has better range overall. These are not the crowns that we're competing for here. And the idea of this comparison is um, not to have a winner. It's just to show the differences between the two systems. So the first point I would like to make is horses for courses. What do you want to do with the system that you've bought? If you want to do long range stuff and fly behind a whole heap of scraggle and uh, go into bandos and go behind brick walls and things like that, then you're probably still going to want the DJI stuff. Where the shark bite really shines is for the racing and for the micros and the smaller builds. And I think that's where the future lies for this. I think the goal here is not to beat DJI, but the goal is to kill analog. And if we kill analog, it's a good thing. It's a win for everybody. There's another point. Uh, what existing equipment do you have? Okay, so I got loads of stuff because I'm lucky and I've been doing this for a long time and I've spent an enormous amount of money on everything. Um, if you already have a set of HDOs or HDO2s or even older Fat Shark goggles, putting this module on there is a good upgrade. 
it, it is really genuinely going to give you a better picture even if you don't have the full HDO2 full res of, um, of shark bite you're still going to notice an improvement um, when we were in the park the other weekend and I was test flying this and everyone was having a look uh, everybody put on the different goggles and we all had a good look through and um, the overall consensus was yeah it, it looks good it looks better than analog and you go back to analog after flying this and you go Whew, okay yeah that's that's not so crash hot um, form factor is another thing you know look at those nuggets this thing's smaller and lighter and doesn't have the disastrous UI of this thing. This thing's got a bigger field of view. Some people like the picture here, some people like the picture here. Goggles are a really personal thing. Goggles, I'll say it again, goggles are a really personal thing. You've got to try them on, you've got to stick them on your face and you've got to fly with them before you can really accurately judge um, which one is best for you. Uh, and, and that comes down to the horses for courses thing again. The thing you have to remember is as well that the goggle experience when you're flying with them on your face is very different to what you're seeing on YouTube. Uh, I can't stress this enough. When you fly with these things it doesn't look the same as a blown up 720p compressed picture on your giant 4K screen. It's not going to look good. Um, but to those people out there who are uh, the uh, IFPV and I have an opinion crowd uh, who say doesn't look any better than analog, you have no idea. Put on a set of goggles, fly with it, and then make the decision. So, it's overall a definite improvement on Bite Frost. Bite Frost had a big ground station. This has a tiny little receiver module that goes on your goggles. Definite improvement. Um, picture quality is improved a little bit. Uh, penetration is improved again a little bit. A few more milliwatts, it all helps. Um, the form factor of the VTX, yeah, they, they've, they've gotten real close with this one, but I just wish that it was a true 20 by 20 so that it could fit into every build that will fit a, um, a Cadex Vista because then you have no problems. Because it's slightly longer, the VTX isn't going to fit in some builds. The OSD also needs some serious work. Um, it's very primitive, not very configurable, and uh, it's coming from the VTX side. And there's no longer any need for that to happen now with digital. It should all be done in the receiver. But all this is just software, so with a bit of luck in time and um, a few different VTX vendors, this stuff will be easy to work out. The important thing here is that the underlying technology is solid and that's the digital transmission system that's being used. With this low latency here, it's perfect for racing. So I think the future's solid there. There's also hopefully no problem with the quality control, but I did have two VTXs in one of mine was a bit wonky so I had to send it back to see what can be done with that. Um, hopefully that's not representative of production quality and in fact they've made some changes on the production boards already so we'll see what happens there. Um, test stuff is test stuff. Uh, I think the last point that I want to make here is that it's exciting. I'm excited. You should be too. Digital stuff is going to replace analog stuff if it succeeds. I know DJI has been out there for a year. Um, it has its pros and cons. It feels very robotic to me and I don't like the JPEG compression, but I have been flying DJI stuff almost exclusively for quite some time. So for all those people out there who are like saying I'm a giant fat shark fanboy and yes I am and sure I like the goggles and I know the guys and whatever, I want this to succeed. Um, yeah, but I've been flying DJI too. You know, it's a good system. So uh, make your choices based on what you want to do. And um, I hope that this just improves the hobby all around. You know, the death of analog is what I've been waiting for for years. And this is definitely it. So thanks for watching. Um, 
I don't care if you subscribe particularly, um, but if you want to, you can. And um, leave some comments, but try and make them constructive. Otherwise, I might have to make fun of you uh, in my laid back Australian sarcastic way. And I guess we'll see you out there in the next one. Thanks for watching. Ciao.